Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread, where 100% of their food is 100% clean. Everything from their delicious soups, the broccoli cheddar, the vegetarian creamy tomato, and the bistro French onion soup, to the satisfying sandwiches, roasted turkey and avocado BLT, or steak and arugula sandwich. And don't forget about their fresh brewed coffee and their bottomless mug. Panera is a great place to meet friends or get some work done. That's where the bottomless mug comes in. It's all at Panera Bread. And now, enjoy the show. It's actually impossible to imagine after all these years of hosting Reading with Robin that this is the first time I'm getting to chat with Sophie Kinsella. I I'm shocked, actually, Sophie. <laughs> I, it's it's not possible. When I received the email about your latest, my not so perfect life, I thought I have not ever spoken to Sophie. Bizarre well, is that. Better sounds. not be the, the the first and last. Let's make uh, this a regular thing now. It, as we go forward, as we go forth on reading <laughs> with Robin, this now becomes the regular thing, because oh my goodness, Sophie is the author of so many favorites. Certainly the Shopaholic series, and then your standalones, I've got your number, Can You Keep a Secret? The Undomestic Goddess, Remember Me, 20s Girl, Wedding Night, the brand new book, this gorgeous green jump-off-the-shelf book, My Not-So-Perfect Life, hits the shelves in the States today, and it is a pleasure. Welcome to Reading with Robin. Sophie. Thank you so much. It's a real joy to be here. It really is. I'm still baffled by this. <laughs> I don't know how this is possible. I don't know. This is feeling like a rom-com, is it not? We missed each other for oh. so long, but now here we are. There I we know. And who would we cast in this rom-com? <laughs> now I'm going to go with it because, of course, Confessions of a Shopaholic, if that movie wasn't the epitome of, like, my favorite kind of movie, I don't know what was. So was good. It was fun, wasn't it? It oh was my. very funny. So much fun. Did you have a, I don't know what the, the sense was with screenwriting or any of input in the movie, but was that something you worked on? I ended up working on it, yeah, on on the set. I wasn't so much involved, you know, in all the years of development, but right at the end I got invited to the set and I ended up really quite involved. So it, that wow. was a joy because never having really been involved in film, it's just such a different world. It was fascinating. Yes. It must be, and then to see it, because that's one of those movies, and I always love to talk about that on this show, because books, movies, you know, things that we all enjoy, but that's one of those movies that if it's on, I'm going to stop and watch it, no matter where, it's, oh, you know, at what point it is, because it's just, you know, it's one of those feel-good kind of movies. It and, is feel-good. It right? is feel-good. And that's what your very books funny are. And bright. Well, yes. I hope so, you know. I mean, they've all got, like, a bit of a message or a theme or something yes. to think about. But my, I, I, my kind of aim, really, is, to, is to, to get these themes across by making people laugh, and that's my <laughs> primary aim. If I can make someone laugh and turn over the pages and want to know what's happening next, then I'm a happy person. Well, brava, because you have done that. I mean, your readers oh. <laughs> love you. Your readers adore you. And that is the thing, because there is, and, and they're in this new book, My Not-So-Perfect Life, because this is such a topic about what we see online. And you can, speaking of, you can visit Sophie in many places. Her website, oh, sophiekinsella.co.uk. Yes. You also have an official Facebook page. You can find Sophie on Twitter, Instagram, and, and I don't know book Instagram. How is it possible that I've missed this? There's Sorry? A book Instagram. My not so, there's a separate oh, book Instagram. Oh, there Insta- is. Okay, so this is a very special page. My Not So Perfect Life Instagram is for people to post um, pictures oh. of when their life is not so perfect. And it's inspired by the book and <gasps> events from the book. Love and it. you know what? It's just been so much fun that now if something in my life goes wrong, and there are several examples on the page already, like my food has burned in the oven because I forgot <laughs> about it, or one of them is I, I put a carrier bag on a hook and the carrier bag collapsed, you know, the paper oh, just, dear. just broke. <laughs> And instead of thinking, oh, no, I think, great, this is perfect for <laughs> my not-so-perfect life. And I take a picture and I post it. I think so that's... So it's like complete silver linings. Awesome. I love that. It's the feel good about stuff. It's just the ultimate making lemonade. <laughs> I'm going to... All right. I'm going to... Now I'm going to think about things that I can post. I won't have to think too long. And it is... <laughs> and things do happen. And I think that's the thing, too, about reading your books and 
finding the humor because, you know, life is, is crazy and tough. So to find things to laugh about but yet get the message and a point and, um, you know, it comes through strongly so that there are many things in my Not So Perfect Life to talk about. The tweaking of online life. There you go. Yeah. I sometimes actually think about not remembering when there was a time where everything wasn't so online. It obviously wasn't long ago, but I can't imagine another world right now, right? It's like we discovered a new planet or something, <laughs> and now we're all on that planet. Sort of like, oh, hi, we're here. But we haven't yeah. quite worked out how the planet works. It's and we're bizarre. sort of finding our way. Yes. I know. It, and what's it, interesting is that every single generation, as far as I can work out, has embraced this mm-hmm. technology. We're True. all there together. It's not just a young person's kind of cool fad. It's everyone. And, you know, it kind of get, it brings out the best and the worst of us. It's, it's very true because certainly when when we airbrush our lives and put them up there for people, and I hear this a lot of times from friends, I'm hiding that one, I'm not looking at that one, and people get so like worked up about it because there is that sense of what we post and what's real life, and <laughs> and I love the idea of the planet that we're on. I mean, we're down to the part where if we go out to lunch or something, I'm like, am I allowed to eat this or do we photograph this first? Are I'm we like, putting our meals like- together? Can I take a bite? Is the lighting yeah. okay at this table? I mean, it's crazy, it's right? It's ridiculous. I mean, when I've been on tour, I had this running joke with my agent. It doesn't exist unless we've tweeted it. Mm-hmm. And exactly. It kind of it starts <laughs> to feel like that. You feel like something's missing. If and you know, you're right. You go out for tea, and all the phones are out. And by the way, we're all taking pictures of the same thing. I know. And we're all posting the same thing. Uh, you got it. I had an event last week, two weeks ago, with five authors. And I had somebody taking a picture, and I said, I promise we will share this picture. Nope, seven phones in our face. So you know what the pictures look like? Everyone looking a different way. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Same, I'm like, I promise you, I share, I post. But you're right, if a, if a tree falls in a forest and no one hears it, yeah. if we didn't tweet yeah. it, it yeah. doesn't count. No, so, so is that what drove the idea for my not-so-perfect life and well, on the phone? Well, you know, is, it's definitely a major theme of the book. I mean, it's actually slightly broader than that because yes. it's it's also about just believing that other people's lives are perfect, even outside of social media. And so the main um, dynamic is between a girl in her 20s who has come to London, is desperate to make it. She's kind of <laughs> fantasized about London, so she has slightly projected what she believes London must be. And part of that is she looks at her boss, who is a woman in her 40s, who seems to have it all and just be the epitome of your cool, hip, successful Londoner. And she slightly fixates on this woman and thinks this woman has the perfect life. She has the job and the house and the kids and the status and everything you could possibly want. And she can't work out how she can get from where she is to where this boss is. Um, but she also have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the boss. And so it's really a story of two women and, and the, the girl kind of finding out who she should be. And there's a sort of quite a, a shenanigan-y plot involving all this <laughs> politics, and then she ends up in the countryside. And, it's um, very funny. She it's really across and, the boss again. And I love, you know, I love when people sort of meet up at a different, in a different space. That's always a lot of fun because well, we change. Well, that's definitely an inspiration. Is, is I've always loved the idea of what if you ran into your boss on holiday uh. and they looked completely different. They're, mm-hmm. they're their family, they've taken off their kind of armor of the work mm-hmm. outfit and they're perhaps being, you know, I mean, we've all seen it. In fact, when my husband used to be a headmaster and uh. wherever we went on holiday, you'd have some poor child stricken, <laughs> saying, oh, Mr. Wickham, Mr. Headmaster. That's and right. they could not get over seeing him in, a different in space. real life with his wife, with his yeah. children. Perhaps the children are playing up. You know, they, they, And actually, it's sort of quite similar, seeing yeah. your boss off duty. Um, yeah. So that, for me, provided a little of the comedy in the, in the book. It's very funny. I mean, I couldn't help but sort of, as I was reading it, imagining the facial expressions or the body language or the tension and and you've given these so you have Katie and is it Demeter 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 yeah. what a great name I mean well, it is a you love it and it's she's so great, proud of it she's it's got just, it at the harvest she it, thinks she's terribly down to earth and authentic but she's really not <laughs> not quite also when you're throwing things at characters where they're doing something or being something who they're not it's always interesting to see how that's going to unfold because inevitably people get found out 
exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, this this whole book is about things not being what they seem, and about fibs through to quite a big thumping lie, which is a big <laughs> plot point and ends up completely unraveling, as these big lies tend to do. Oh but it's yeah, also lies. Just about the the little <laughs> tiny fictions that aren't quite lies, but they're just not quite the the reality of of the whole picture. And there's a lot of that going on, and I think everybody kind of has their mask oh. that they put on, the role that they're playing. You know, being a boss is quite a theme in the mm-hmm. book. Yeah. You know, Demeter's playing the role of a boss, and there's another boss character, and Katie, of course, would love one day to be a boss. And so there's, there's quite a lot about that, and I think that's another way that we just have to present ourselves to the world and not tell the whole picture, which is that perhaps we're scared of taking meetings or, you know, we don't much like being a boss. I mean, being a boss is lonely, uh, well, that's the thing. But of course, bosses can't admit that. No, and and you see what you what the outside projection is, what is is viewed, and and the all of the hopes and dreams that go along with that. But if certainly if someone were to let their armor down or to share that, then the whole mystery is is blown, and you know the the sense of power and control or whatever they don't want to share really is it's just not that same equal footing. So it's very exactly. interesting. Yeah, and these and these ladies are so interesting to read about and really the humor and the thought provoking situations they find themselves because you do you when I read a book I think, Wow, would I do that? Or how would I get out of this? Or how wow, that was really creative of her. And again, and I never give there are no spoilers on reading with Robin. I'm speaking oh, with good. I'm so glad. I'm oh so yes. Glad. No spoilers. Somebody actually just emailed me, oh I know what it was and said, I want to listen to such and such a podcast but I didn't read the book yet and I said, Come on, you know, you could you feel free, listen, I promise I will give nothing away. My not so perfect, I want to say perfect, my not so perfect life hits the shelves today and I am thrilled to be chatting with the queen of romantic comedy, Sophie Kinsella. <laughs> now, what are some of the books you're reading? Now, you're, you're, in, the, well, you're in the States now um, and you're touring. So where can people see you? I know I saw, where are you? So I'm doing um, events at Barnes & Noble's. So yes, starting, they look fun, so fun. Yeah, well, they, there are these new Barnes and Nobles. There's one in East Chester, I believe it is, yes, and Minneapolis, okay. and then I'm going to, to Toronto, um, and well, which is not Barnes and Noble, but uh, it will also be lovely. Um, and for me, just meeting readers and seeing their faces, you know, this is kind of uh, the other side to social media is we we reach out to each other, but we're only doing it on a screen. We're not seeing yeah. each other. So for me, coming in an airplane, <laughs> yeah, the so fun. And I mean, meeting readers. Your readers love you, and I can only imagine it's just a huge fangirl moment. And people must want to talk about past books and what your characters are doing. And I always want to know what are the authors reading. So if you can share with the reading with Robin listeners some of your recent favorites or maybe what you're packing what you pack to take with you well what i'm reading oh my word well i've just read commonwealth by Anne. Patrick, oh, so good which yes. i absolutely loved i have to say she's just one of those writers who everything that she writes i find interesting and i always do i mean she, she chooses such different subjects to write about yes um, she does and, very varied yeah and that was each, a good one. each one is you know is interesting um, and then I'm about to start. Um, I will. I know another recent one I must mention is the Year of Living Danishly. Oh, uh, I don't know that one. You. Well, it's no. nonfiction, and mm-hmm. it's, we, we've all got obsessed in the UK about Hugo. Do you know this? Company? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the so cozy, cozy. This, yes. Yeah, being cozy. So this is yes. the perfect time of year for it, and it's a, by Helen Russell, who who went to live in Denmark, in very rural Denmark, when her husband got a job with Lego. Mm. Um, and she and she did a complete analysis of why are the Danes so happy, and oh. it's really thoughtful. And you know, I have heard of that. Into... So it's the art of living Dan- Danish. It's the year of living. Danishly. Oh, the year, the year. I'm doing the yeah. art of the. I'm doing the other book, the year of living Danishly. Yes, the yes, the Huga. I, yeah, I like that. I like anything yeah. that's cozy, you know, and books yeah, yeah. if they don't fall into that category. Okay, so those are two. So Commonwealth and then this one nonfiction. Do you And then read I on- want to read um Today Will Be Different by Maria Semple, which I haven't uh, read yet. I haven't read but that I'm yet. To that. You yeah. haven't read it yet. No, I haven't read it yet. I have it. You know you know what the stacks are like. I can only imagine what people send you to read, to blurb, to share. 
uh, yeah. it must it must be toppling. And then, well, I tell you what, it's difficult because I don't really read a lot when I'm in the middle of writing mm-hmm. because yeah. I pick up people's voice. I'm like mm-hmm. a parrot. And so I start to write like them, and this is no good. I can't. I have to write like me. Um, and so what happens is that I write and write and write, and then I kind of wake up and blink, and there's this stack of books. <laughs> I can imagine what the I stack is. I kind of plunge is. in, and it's actually uh, a real joy. And there have always been a few books that I've sort of saved up and thought, hmm, that'll be for, It's like a prize, you know? It's a carrot that yes, keeps me going. Absolutely. And I would think that. I know there are some authors that can read while they're writing, and I, I've heard many say that, you know, they don't want someone else's voice to sort of seep in and that that would be more what I could imagine and then but as a as a writer and and a big reader because most are I can imagine where you're like oh everyone's talking about these books so you sort of stockpile them and but you're always writing I mean you're quite prolific obviously well I am I am, yeah. but luckily I read quite fast as well. <laughs> well, that, well, that is a really good thing. That's not one of my superpowers, but it's one that I aspire to. And this is such a treat, and I wish you a wonderful tour. And all of the readers are going to be very excited to get their hands on my not-so-perfect life. Visit Sophie's website and, and Facebook page and Twitter, Instagram, and post your not-so-perfect life pictures on Instagram. Yes, I love that. Do. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to yeah, do, you're going to no, be like enough. Fun. You're going to, yeah. I get it, Robin. Not so perfect. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> this was such a treat. Thank you so much. And I look forward to doing this again. Absolutely. Now we've begun. This is That's it. it. We're oh, on our path. You again. It's, Thank it's you, been Sophie. lovely to talk. Thank you so much. Reading with Robin brought to you by the Point Street Reading Series, which happens the third Tuesday of every month in Providence, Rhode Island. For more information and to see which fabulous authors we'll be reading, please visit Point Street Reading Series on Facebook. And now, enjoy the show. Jen Glantz had me at the title, Always a Bridesmaid for Hire, Stories on Growing Up, Looking for Love, and Walking Down the Aisle for Complete Strangers is out today. Jen is the world's first professional bridesmaid and founder of Bridesmaid for Hire. The book is fabulous, full of heart and hilarity, and I am thrilled to have her on Reading with Robin. Welcome to the show, Jen. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Robin. This is such a pleasure. And, you know, you, because you've written this very heartfelt book and you have this wonderful website and videos, I feel like we're old friends already. <laughs> and it's really, it's charming and it's smart and it's clever. And I love the dedication in the beginning, um, you know, at the start of the book and talking about the support that you have from your family. And And to me, this book also is, is a great deal about following our dreams, having passion, yes. and, and going for it. So can you talk a little bit about that and always wanting to be a writer since you were a little girl? Yes, I was the kind of kid who grew up, I was very shy, bullied a little bit in school, found myself mm. absolutely enthralled by going to the library. I would beg my parents to take me, and when I was there, I would check out the max amount of books that they would let me, and then uh, yes. I would check out even more my parents' <laughs> cards, and I loved to read, but I also loved to write, and I would read a book, and then I would write on you know my own paper, my own book right after, and mm. it was always something I loved to do, but I faced a lot of people telling me that I shouldn't do it. Um, I had experiences where teachers told me that I shouldn't grow up to be a writer, and I had bosses who told me I should quit my fantasy of becoming a published writer, and, you know, I could have I could have listened to them. I should have probably listened to them, but something inside no, no, me No, no, <laughs> no. You know, I'm glad I didn't, So something inside of me told me, don't you dare, and, um, you know, that's why I'm so proud of this book, because it happened because I ignored all of that chaos. I think that's such an important lesson, and truly, I, I'm curious about the teacher, the boss, you know, and people also have their own agenda sometimes, and that's one of the things that, that I've talked to my kids about a lot, because the teacher yeah. who said that, my guess is that teacher has a dusty old manuscript or two in her drawer. Yeah. That's my. Did you send a copy to the ninth grade teacher or no? I didn't, but we're Facebook friends. And oh, oh, I, really? <laughs> I post all my accomplishments. And what happened was, you know, this wasn't my freshman year of uh, high school. I tried out for the journalism, the newspaper, mm-hmm. and I sent in my clips, and he rejected me. He said, you know, you're not on the staff. And I went up to him and I said, you know, why? I love to write. Why can't I be on the newspaper staff? And he said to me, you're not a good writer. You should do anything else but write. You're never going to mm-hmm. be a writer. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I was this 14-year-old girl who back then didn't listen, and I, I ended up getting a gig writing for the local newspaper. And when my first awesome. article came out, I slapped it on his desk, and I said, <laughs> didn't listen to you, you know, I, I did what I wanted to do, and, um, you know, now it's for you. Friends. So I'm sure he uh, sees all of the, the success. I love that. I, I've heard friends tell similar stories, and there's nothing like saying, aha, you know, thank you for telling me I couldn't do it. Here here you go. So you talk about not giving up on your dreams, and on your website, well, people can go to jenglance.com. There are a few websites, so I also was on um, your other site, the things I learned from .com, but which, not to confuse everybody too much, which is the best site to send people to? Jenglance.com is the best. That's the hub for everything. That's where okay. you'll find out about the book, the blog, and the business. Okay, so the book, the blog, the business. You are a very busy lady, so go to jenglance.com. You can from there also see Instagram. You can go to Twitter, to Facebook. And there's a video where you talk about where you're holding your book and you're talking about seeing and we we can see you, see your book for the first time. I was just getting chills watching this. And it's, as you say, it's raw and it's pure emotion. And it's really beautiful, and, and I can tell what a book person you are because you smell the book. And I yes. have a thing about smelling books, right? I love I'm, it. Uh, so excited for you. And if you don't feel like eating a piece or two pies of pizza reading this book, it's, <laughs> I felt like after I saw Mystic Pizza, I had to go and have pizza. And I'm on the phone with Jen Glantz, always a bridesmaid for hire, is her brand new book. It's out today, and you will want pizza, which is which is a good thing. And the, the, your family's passion, the passion that they have for your work, and your relationship with your brother is so darling. I love the way you call him up when when you need to figure this out, and he's your first phone call. He is. You know, I started this business by accident. I was advising for my friends a bunch of times. I decided to make it into a business and posted an ad on Craigslist offering my services as a bridesmaid. And, you know, when that blew up and when I saw there was interest and I saw there was need, I didn't know what to do. I was a poetry major in college. I had no clue how to start a business. So when you have a crazy idea, most people you would turn to would say, come on, John, what are you thinking? And I turned to a family member who said to me, let's do this. And that was really helpful back then. I love that. I just thought that was um, so endearing and, uh, you know, to have the support, but the, I don't know how to do this. Who's going to help me figure out how to do it? So you wrote this ad, uh, it was a Friday night uh, on Craigslist. Yes. And your your mom's told you to stay off of Craigslist. I also love the stuff with your parents, the whole family element of this book and how you grew up and, and all of the storytelling woven through your your path to, to uh, bridesmaid dumb. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, and all of your friends getting married. So I loved, I loved that whole. Uh, yeah. So your mom tells you don't go on Craigslist, so you go on Craigslist. You post this. Um, walk the audience through what happens after you've posted this Craigslist ad. I had a night where two friends, distant friends, asked me to be a bridesmaid, and I was frustrated and confused. And I came home. I asked my roommate. You know, I said, "This is what happened," and she said to me, "You've become a professional bridesmaid." And that's when these sirens went off in my head, and I said, "Why not be a bridesmaid for strangers? Why not try this?" So I took this idea to the craziest place you could take an idea, which is Craigslist. My mom always told me that nothing good comes from Craigslist, so don't ever use it. Uh, and I ignore everything my mom says. So I went on Craigslist, and I wrote this ad anonymously. I shut my computer. I didn't think about it for a couple of days. And then when I checked my email address on Monday, I had so many emails from brides all over the world the ad had gone completely viral, and here I was faced with the decision of laughing this whole thing off or turning it into a business. Like, how does this happen? I mean, these are the things about the Internet that just blow my mind and so catch my attention because if you try to do this, it's very hard. You know, and so when something catches on like that to go viral and have people from all over the world, it was shared from your pay, it was shared something like, what did you say, fourteen or 15,000 times or something crazy like that? Yeah, it was completely, you know, it was shared everywhere. There were articles about it everywhere. I didn't even know that. I was at work and a friend uh, had G-chatted me an article from BuzzFeed saying, look at this cool idea a girl has. It's an article about her offering her 
surprised me to strangers. And I wrote back, I'm like, oh, my God, that is me. I cannot this, even imagine what you must have felt like realizing. I was sitting in my chair sweating, and the girl was like, yeah, Jen, you should have thought of this first. And I was like, no, I did think of this. This is mine. Oh. I had to email BuzzFeed and claim the ad. And that's pretty much the last time I remember feeling calm in my life. I think since I, then it's been an adventure. I, it's such an adventure, and go to jenglance.com, and you can see some of these clips in Good Morning America with Sarah Haynes, I think it was, who I yeah. love, and this first part. So, and, and one of the things that I think about, and going back to back in the day, and I know, I think I was reading in your in the book, Your Parents Met on a Blind Date, right? Is that right? Yes, they did, okay. yeah. Yeah, as, as well as my husband and I, same. And there's no such thing as that anymore because you can know so much about somebody and just dismiss them before you really even give somebody a chance, you know, good, for good or bad. So things like that just don't happen. And then I was thinking, too, about, like, the, the pain of picking or not picking enough bridesmaids or too many and all of that that goes on. So it's just really a bizarre concept to me that somebody would want a stranger there that day. But listening to you talk about it makes total sense. Somebody that has, like, the voice of reason, somebody that's really paying attention and not really just checking out, like, the groomsmen, you know, really focused yeah. on the br- – because the bride does get kind of left high and dry sometimes. So, you know, talk about some of the people who were in need of or, you know, thought, hey, I can hire a bridesmaid. This is great. I think that we always forget how close we get to strangers. You know, oftentimes we tell strangers things we would never dare tell our friends. And it's mm-hmm. the same thing with this job. Strangers hire me to be there for them in ways they don't want to ask their friends. They don't yeah. want to bother them at midnight with a question or on the day of the wedding have them run to CVS because they forgot eyeliner or, you know, do the dirty work for them. And sometimes they don't want to tell their friends they have cold feet or tell yeah. their friends to go tell the mother of the bride to leave her alone. So I'm there to really do the dirty work, and I'm there to deal with problems that I think these brides are a little scared to tell their friends about, which is normal and fine. And that's where you become like a therapist. And it's true. When you think about what you'll tell on a – I mean, not everybody, because I know some people say to me, well, I wouldn't do that, but I do. You know, you can be on an airplane with somebody for three hours, and they know you better than a lot of close friends because there's a sense of – you're never going to see them again, or they're a stranger. Yep. Except yeah. for now with Facebook, some of these people follow you <laughs> forever. But oh, yeah. you're right; it, it is it is a very different circumstance. And you're it, it, going through the wedding and that whole process. There are so many things that come up. So to have somebody that you can really share with is really an amazing um, gift. That's that's not on the registry. So it does make a lot of sense. I can see that and. There are a lot of, uh, I was thinking about like the duties of my bridesmaids. I think I need to tell everybody they owe me a few favors because I don't remember asking anyone to do anything unless that's. Oh, they're lucky. You know, maybe that's just, I think my mother did everything. I don't remember. There's there's also the I don't remember, but I just, I think it's just an amazing um, concept. It's so clever and that it just sort of unfolded like this is, you know, and then what you learn from people, like some, what are some of the surprising situations you found yourself in or pieces of information that were confided to you where you couldn't believe, like, okay, how am I going to deal with this one? I've dealt with many situations where the bride had cold feet, Um, one in particular where she had cold feet five minutes before the ceremony and didn't think she wanted to do it. Um, I've had a situation where I worked with the bride, we talked on the phone, you know, once a month for like a year, and The night before the wedding, she sits me down and she tells me that the man she's marrying is gay and she's marrying him for reasons other than traditional love. Um, You know, there's been many situations just like that where people have fascinating stories, and it's all of us. We all have fascinating stories and secrets, and part of this job is to really talk to the people about these secrets and help them through it because I'm not there to judge. You know, I'm never going to judge anybody. I have truly seen it all when it comes to love and marriage and relationships. So my job is just to help make sure everyone does what they want to do and, and, and help them make their whole experience better, not to sit there and roll my eyes and question and judge. Well, if ever, if there's anybody that's seen anything, really that's like the most raw emotion and the most fraught time. It's It's exciting and wonderful, but certain – behaviors come out and people and then there's the family members and who don't you want in this picture and make sure the photographer is nowhere near that one and tell the bartender to cut so and so off have you ever counseled somebody to say you know if you have cold feet maybe there's a reason and we should cut this off or 
has anybody ever decided I'm listening to my my gut and I'm not going to go through with this? You know, I think as uh, the person that they, you know, they tell me these things and uh, I try to be their unofficial therapist. So just like, you know, my therapist would say, you don't ever tell someone what to do. You just get them to make the decision on their own. So you ask them questions, you, right. you, you get them to figure it out. But, you know, in the situation where five minutes before the wedding started and the bride told me she didn't want to do it, I told her she didn't have to. And I think that's something your friends might not say to you because they don't want you to feel embarrassed. They want you to walk down the aisle. Whereas I want you to do what you want. So I gave yeah. it out. I said, you don't want to do this. I'll call us a taxi. We'll go home. You don't have to. And I think that was a very different perspective than anybody else could have given her. Yeah, I agree. I know people don't think clearly when they're also sometimes too close to the situation. And on the phone is Jen Glance out today. Always a bridesmaid for hire stories on growing up, looking for love, walking down the aisle for complete strangers. The cover is adorable with the curlers. I think that is the cutest oh, thing. Thank you. The, sh- the shoes and the, the flowers, the great dress. And, of course, I couldn't read this book without thinking of the beloved movie, 27 Dresses. Um, yes. You know, and Runaway Bride and Best Friend's Wedding and all my favorite, uh, the Anne Hathaway movie and all that. But um, are, which are some of your favorite wedding kind of movies? My favorite wedding movie of all time is my best friend's wedding. Oh, I love that. I love how Julia Roberts, you know, <laughs> thinks she tries to fight for the man at the end, but doesn't work out. And uh, I, I just love that movie, and I love her character in it. I think that, you know, she, she doesn't want to lose out on this love she has with the best friend, but then perhaps she realizes that it's not, you know, meant to be. And it's just it's heartbreaking, but it's also so real and beautiful, and I, I love oh. it. I watched that so many times. It is heartbreaking. I love now. I feel like watching it. Well, and Cameron Diaz makes her Kimmy right. Makes her her yes. her bridesmaid. They don't know each other, but she's the best friend of the groom. So I guess that's. But I remember thinking the same. Wait, how can you be a bridesmaid? But there you right. go. Right. She, she you been, never know. You never know how that's going to work out. It's that is. It's a terrific movie, and and this never give up. So here you have this book, and so you didn't give up on your dreams. You're going to be doing signings. I know you said um, New York, Florida. Do you have the dates? People should go to jenglance.com. Yes, February 9th, Barnes and Noble, Upper East Side of New York City, 7 p.m. We'll be doing a book signing. February 17th, Boca Raton, Barnes and Noble. We'll be doing ah. a signing at 7 p.m. And then Books and Books in Miami on the 18th at 3 p.m. We'll be doing a signing there as well. Many more to come, so keep checking out jenglance.com for updates. And you can go to Instagram, and you can be found on Twitter. Now your own story. You tell some really great. I love that you let your mother log into your J-Date account. And, yes. Um, and <laughs> – and find the perfect guy for you. I was cracking up. Your mother sounds lovely, and I could really appreciate these stories. So talk about some of your dates and some of the things that you've learned on your own path. Uh, Oh, man, I have been on my fair share of really bad, wild dates, and I've also done some crazy things to try and find love. I was set up with Matchmaker, who tried to pair me with my perfect match. And And had that go. It was anything but perfect. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have done everything. I um, have my mom hacked my dating account. I did an experiment last year where I went on 14 first dates in the month of February. Oh, um, cool. Of course, didn't meet anybody through those 14 dates. So I'm the kind of person who knows that, you know, love can be found anywhere and everywhere. And because of that, you have to sometimes do wild, crazy things to reach out and grab it. Absolutely. Like, who would be your ideal date? What's an example of an ideal date for Jen Glantz? I think an ideal date for Jen Glantz involves one thing and one thing only, and that's pizza. <laughs> so say, uh, you know, pizza at a bookstore is the key to my heart. Anything else is just background noise. I think it's that simple to win over, you know, my very simple childish heart. <laughs> that's so – I love that. So what kind of pizza do you like? Um, traditional pizza? Do you like the, you know, the more nouveau kind of um, thin crusted oven, you know, wood oven, or you like traditional, or you like raised? I know you like the dollar slices. I read about the dollar slices. Yeah. Do they still have I, the dollar slices? 
Oh, they do. My favorite pizza is the greasy street pizza you get in New York City for 75 cents or a dollar. Oh, I get best. two of those slices, and I eat them while walking home. <laughs> that is my ritual. I do that maybe three or four times a week. And the best thing about New York pizza is really it's there's, it's very hard to find bad New York pizza. It's I really agree. Right? It's just really good. I forget which one of the places that I went to recently and uh forget somebody said eh, it's okay and i was like you know i'm in rhode island i said this is really good pizza you have it no is. idea it's really yeah. great i know the pizza here you cannot go wrong it is one of the things that makes me happy in this crazy city you really you really really can't go wrong so um so you've done a lot of crazy things but i think that's another thing that i i got from reading the book is to be open to things and you just never sort of know what's going to happen i mean you know a lot of them said to me wow we see why you would do this you are a great mm-hmm. bridesmaid for us we totally get it and a lot of my friends were very supportive like that and you know of course i i had people who were you know texting me emailing me saying what are you doing jenna you lost your mind and <laughs> They didn't get it. They didn't love it. They didn't understand it. But, hey, they didn't have to. It wasn't their business. And, um, you know, it's a crazy idea. I've had to defend it on live TV. I've had to defend it in front of anybody who criticizes it. But I love it, and I've seen it work for complete strangers, and I've seen the beauty of it. And, uh, you know, I really think there is a need for it, and I've, I've stood behind it for two and a half years. I think it is, is so clever. I think I give you the most credit for just – for following your dream and writing the book and creating a business, I just think there is nothing like that. I don't see what there is to defend, really. I think it's it's clever. It makes a lot of sense, and I am so excited for people to get their hands on Always a Bridesmaid for Hire, stories on growing up, looking for love, and walking down the aisle for complete strangers. Now, do you keep in touch with your brides? Because so this has been two and a half years. Is that what you said? Yeah, and I do. There's a lot of brides who live local that I keep in touch with. I see often, and even some who don't live here but visit, and we always get together. And that's one of the greatest parts of the job is the relationships I've built with people and the friendships that will definitely carry on forever. Now, I wonder if you're going to also be re- requested in the delivery room, because I could see that as, like, the next <laughs> thing. <laughs> do, I do love it. Exactly. Or something. Yes. Right? Oh, man, that would be wild. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, but I'll never say never. If there's anybody that could be ready for anything, and maybe it involves pizza, I have a feeling it's you, Jen Glantz, and I want oh, to congratulate right. you. And uh, this is just awesome. Always a bridesmaid for hire. Go to jenglantz.com. You can visit her at her events. You can check back and see where she'll be in uh, New York on the 9th on the Upper East Side at Barnes & Noble and then in Boca and then Miami um, in February. I forget the dates off the top of my head, but go to jenglantz.com. And this is just just a huge winner. And just soak it up. You've got your book. I mean, congratulations, Jen. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your love and support and for not calling me crazy. I really appreciate it. Oh, my God. Crazy like a fox. Is that what they say? I love it. (laughs) Awesome. Congratulations.